Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Have us take some seats and want to welcome everybody. What a beautiful morning to come and worship God, right? Amen. And I uh, want to say welcome to all of you who are joining us online. I, I do want to say this. Um, if you're like first time visitor here or online or anything, uh, that's wonderful. Glad you're here. This service will be very different than what we normally do, though. I just need you to be aware of that. Uh, actually, the next this next week will be too. Uh, you'll understand in a moment. So this is a, a very different, a little bit different anyway, a type of service than we would be doing most of the time. It's always good to know that because I think some people come in and they get in, they, that that happens. And then you think that's what it's like all the time. And it's never, that's not true of any service, actually. Yeah, yeah. So welcome. Uh, our call to worship this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. Jesus says this, this is, but this, uh, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Now, we know greatest commandment, right? Love the Lord your God, let your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus has changed it and he has made it so much harder. <laughs> Isn't it? Think about it. Because it's one thing for me to love you as I love myself. And that might change from day to day. <laughs> <laughs> love each other, Jesus says, as I have loved you. Well, that bar just got raised. In fact, I would say the bar got raised to a place that I can't achieve most of the time. But you, that's not contradictory because Jesus says, I'm going to help you love each other with my love. He, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Right? So love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he who lays down his life for his friends. That's our opening worship, uh, call to worship. That's our verse. Let's, let's come together in prayer. God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of love and how you do love us. And thank you that, that you help me love others the way you do, because I could not do that on my own. And Lord, thank you for your love that laid down your life for us. We celebrate that every Sunday, God, for your salvation through your death on that cross and for the new life you give us in the resurrection. Thank you. May your presence just permeate this place or the places from which we are connecting right now. More important, maybe, Lord, may your presence permeate our hearts as we worship you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to open with a song. Uh, Kevin, Michelle. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, everybody, here today. And um, as always, welcome to everybody at home over there in the, in the camera over there. We hope that you feel connected to us this morning, even though you are not with us. And we hope that through this service, you feel connected to God as well. Um, how many of you have watched The Chosen? And if not, why not? Go home and watch it right now. <laughs> It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's really great. It, it, it just brings the Bible to life. It just puts it in living color. The reason I mention that is um, there's a prayer that Jesus, Jesus and the disciples have, have been saying as soon as they wake up in the morning. And the prayer is this. I am thankful before you, living and enduring King, for you have mercifully restored my soul within me. Great is your faithfulness. Great prayer. They say that every morning. Which brings me to our first song, which is called Great Is Thy Faithfulness. Do you like that way I did that? <laughs> so please stand. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turn. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter. 
winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy. Faithfulness is good. Let's let's be seated. Uh, have some of our children come on up. Some of our children. How about all of our children? Uh, our older kids now are coming up for children's time. Our younger ones are in childcare. So come on down. Morning. Um, there's a verse in the Bible. Actually, I'm going to say a couple of verses. It says two verses. One says, "You you were bought with a price." Wow. Okay, and that's Jesus just saying he paid the price for us, right? And when he died on the cross for our sins. And, but another verse in John 8 says, So if the Son sets you free, that's the Son of God, you will be free indeed. You are really free. You know? and, and so do you know what? Uh, I brought this this morning. Uh, we have them all decorating out in the front of our church as well, the ribbon on the flowers, the stars, and, and do you know why we're doing all of this today? Do you know why we have this? Huh? Veterans Day? Veterans Day? Nope. That's later this year. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. And they, you know what? 
you're not the only one that gets those confused, so don't worry about that. But today would be called Memorial Day. Uh, well, actually, it's tomorrow. So tomorrow's Memorial Day. And, and the reason for that, it's kind of a holiday where we remember all of our, our soldiers throughout the years who fought for our freedom. I mean, we have a lot of freedoms, right? You get to come here. There were countries in this world, but you know, you couldn't do this today. It would be illegal for you to come to church openly, and you'd get in big trouble. Isn't that crazy to think about? We kind of take this for granted. So we have freedoms. We, we can vote. We can uh, come to church. You know, we can do all of this. But that, came, that freedom comes with a price, and there were soldiers who died fighting for our freedom over the years, many, many years. And so today is a memorial means it's kind of we memorialize, we remember. And, and so tomorrow we, we stop to remember soldiers who were willing to die for our freedom. So remember I began by saying, greater love have no one than he who lays down his life for a friend. That's how I started this. That's what, that's what we're remembering, those soldiers. But also remember, because today is, uh, we're, we're here at church and we're, we're worshiping Jesus, right? That he did the same thing. He went to a cross and uh, he laid down his life so that all of our sins could be forgiven. So he also gave his life for our freedom. Freedom from sin, the penalty of sin. And I want to thank him for doing that as well, even as we remember others on this day too, okay? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for dying for our sins. We remember. Every day, Lord, we remember that you are the one that set us free, and so we are really free. At the same time, Lord, we remember others who gave their lives for the freedoms that we have in our nation. And Lord, we are so honored to remember them tomorrow uh, for, for the freedoms so that we don't take for granted, Lord, the freedoms that we have. Thank you for them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to transition into what I started to speak to uh, with our children. Tomorrow's Memorial Day, and we want to honor what Memorial Day is all about. When when Kathy and I flew home from North Carolina last October, when the plane landed at TF Green, um, we, we were told as it had landed and then started moving towards the gate that uh, we were not going to go to the gate immediately. Okay. That we were going to stop first and we were going to wait for a fallen soldier to disembark first. I looked out my window, and I had a bird's eye view of military honors as the remains of a U.S. Army First Lieutenant Anthony R. Missoula was taken from the plane. It's from Johnston. First Lieutenant Missoula went missing in action nearly 70 years ago in North Korea. And it's because of negotiations, it was uh, between President Trump and Kim Jong-un of North Korea back in 2018 that fallen American soldiers from the Korean War were finally being returned. And it took a couple of years to identify those remains. And I was just watching this as the military was there, as family was there, and it was a sobering moment. It was a sacred moment. And I was so honored to be able to, to witness that. Um, so here's one local Rhode Island person that Memorial Day is all about, right? Um, I came up with this, uh, I saw this video that I just want you to watch for just a few minutes long uh, about Memorial Day. <laughs> When I look back through history and consider all the sacrifices in every war and I try to grasp it all, come to grips with it, stand in reverence of all those willing to give their lives for something bigger than themselves, I am 
was stunned by the sheer numbers. All those lives, all those families, serving their country. I can't always comprehend it. My heart is not big enough to take it all in. That each one didn't come home. What they lost for their service. What we gained for their courage. Today, I stop to remember. Every single number is one soldier. One sailor who got up in the morning and put on a uniform. One marine who answered the call to fight for freedom. One airman who knew the cost and went anyway. One man or woman who paid the ultimate price for many. And the freedom I live in now. Today, I remember. is I asked one of our veterans, Don Lefebvre, a Vietnam War veteran, to just come up and say a prayer uh, for Memorial Day. Don, use that. When George asked me to do this, I sat around. What can I say that would have any meaning? So as maybe some of you know, I, I have this habit of writing in the morning and I send it out to different people and uh, I get blessed by it and they tell me they got blessed by it and I feel it's part of my ministry. So it struck me this morning by the spirit to write something down. It says, we honor the fallen. All who gave their life for our freedom, the brave men and women, sons and daughters of God's kingdom. For greater love has no one than to give one's life for others. It is an act of selflessness that Jesus did for our sisters and brothers. So tomorrow we honor the fallen who gave their all so we could be free. Please bow your hearts in reverence of those who died for you and me. Let us pray. O oh, gracious, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. On this day before Memorial Day, we pray for those who courageously lay down their lives and the families they left behind for the cause of freedom May the example of their sacrifice never be forgotten. Remind us, Father, that love and freedom comes with a cost, just as our Lord and Savior did to set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. So I would just encourage us tomorrow to take a moment. Silent Thanksgiving, prayer, whatever, parents, teach your children. This is uh, why we have the day off, and it's more than just a day off, right? Um, amen. Now I know that uh, t tomorrow's Memorial Day, and we're remembering that, but there's something, uh, we're going to shift away from the pure meaning of Memorial Day to remember, because that's what part of Memorial Day is. And um, it was just, I'll give you this example back um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, back in March of 2020. Um, one of our members passed away and... Uh, all of Kimball, and we could not, boy, I, I get, um, we could not honor her with any type of service. I met at the cemetery with her daughter and some family members, five, six people. And our thought was, we'll do this because we need to, 
do this. And in a couple of months, we'll come back and have the service that we should have had back when that started. Because back then, we thought this would be about a couple of months. We were planning a big celebration even for Pentecost, potluck dinner, everything, because we missed Easter, right? Uh, and I'm glad, I'm really glad I did not know it would not be a couple of months, but a couple of years. The tough part is, as two years go by, you begin to go, do we do this? Is it, you know? And there was just something in, in my heart that just said there are, I know of at least three people connected to our church for whom we could not, did not do what we are good at doing, honoring lives that are a part of our family. Um, you know, and, and I think we do do this well, um, where we not only recognize grief, but we celebrate life and eternal life that Jesus Christ gives us with every funeral and memorial service that we do. We're not doing those services. That's not what today is about. It is just a time of, I want to say just, it's important. Um, it's a time of remembrance. Just to take a moment to remember those that we couldn't honor the way that we should have, could have, and usually do. Right? For each person here, someone is going to get up and speak that had a relationship with that person just to share some thoughts, okay? Um, and and uh, so here, there are the three people. One is Edith Cruz, who... Um, I met Edith because I was doing a worship service once a month at the village at Hillsgrove, which became Greenwich Farms, which I don't know what it is now. Uh, my mom was a resident there. I began doing this. Other people began coming to that service. And Edith, therefore, came there and then began coming here. So some of you, some of you won't know any of these people, by the way. That's okay. Uh, bear with us because you, you know, this is, maybe we get to honor, we will honor you one day. No. <laughs> And do it well. You know, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's about caring for, the, for our family, our spiritual family, right? Um, and then there was Edgar Jordan and Dorothy, uh, Edgar's husband, Caroline, Edgar's uh, daughter. They all began coming here uh, a few years back. And you, some of you met Edgar, and what a neat guy. And again, in the midst of COVID and everything else, Edgar passed away, went to be with the Lord, and we did not get to do what we could, how we could honor Edgar. And then, of course, as I said, there was Olive Kimball, who, who came to this church for over a hundred years. We had two people that did that, Eleanor Morris, Olive Kimball, those two were friends, uh, and we just, you know, and, and uh, in fact, I, I, and, uh, uh, Lynn was hoping to be here, her daughter. Uh, her husband, George, came down with COVID, not able to be here. So uh, hopefully she's watching online. Uh, but, so those are the three people that I just want to take, we just want to take some moments to remember. We're going to start with, with Edith. So um, put that no, slide number three up there. Um, this is Edith. Okay, and one of, our, uh, one of our members does a lot of uh, visitation for those who are predominantly shut in, uh, and that's Donna Nelson, and Donna visited with Edith many times, as, uh, and so I just asked her to say a few words. And by the way, can I just say, Lynn, Lynn, uh, niece? Yeah. This is uh, Edith's niece, who came down from Massachusetts to be here, so welcome, I'm so thankful. Nana? I'm looking forward to meeting you. I heard so much about you over the years. Um, I had the great opportunity to get to know Edith Cruz during the last few years of her life. She was a very special lady who easily showed her love to the Lord. Edith lived very happily at Greenwich Farms for many years. 
I first met her in 2018. At that time, she was nearly deaf. She made it very easy to sit down and simply be with her. She would do most of the talking, and she was very grateful to be living there at Greenwich Farms. Unfortunately, she had a stroke in December 2018. She went to Kent County Hospital and then to Cedar Crest Nursing Home. She never complained, but that nursing home is very short-staffed. Fortunately, she transferred to St. Elizabeth's Home in East Greenwich in March 2019. Praise God. This was a wonderful place, and she became content to be there. <clears throat> During one visit that spring, she told me she no longer had her apartment at Greenwich Farms, and there most of her friends had passed away. She told me she would be dancing with them when she goes. <laughs> Edith appreciated any small gift she received and was sure to refer to it again on the next visit. Edith read her large print Bible every day, and she would talk about the things she had read. She also loved sharing any updates, updates on her two nieces and their lives. I enjoyed hearing about their vacations, holidays, surgeries, whatever was going on. Edith would always ask about my family, and then Edith would ask about Pastor George and his family. She adored them, and she always wanted the news about the two boys and what they were doing. She told me she prayed for them often. In February 2020, I had a wonderful visit with her, Actually, it was the last time I got to see her. But anyway, she told me an update about her nieces. Then she asked me a surprising question. She asked me if she was the oldest church member. Now, most of you people don't do that anymore, but in the olden days, that was a big deal. And, and so I laughed and told her, no, Olive Kimball was a whole 102. And she would, was second. She would be next. Edith loved the Lord dearly, and she was always patiently waiting to go home and be with him. I went through and looked at many Bible verses and tried to pick out something that I thought would represent Edith. And I chose Lamentations 3, 22 to 26, and 31 to 33. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. And it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. For no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he also shows compassion because of the greatness of his unfailing love. For, because he does not enjoy hurting people or causing them sorrow. Edith died and went with the Lord on April 8, 2021. At that time, she was the oldest member of our church, and I had written her a card to tell her that. And Edith is dancing with the Lord and her friends, and it was really a blessing for me to have known her. Thank you. Next person is uh, Edgar Jordan, and I know some uh, that the Galts actually, and Jeff in particular, uh, I've asked him to come and speak because of relationship with them. And so, Jeff, come on up. Edgar, I met Edgar as George said, when our families joined this church together. Um, we went through starting point, we got to meet each other, we got to talk and tell our stories. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to know Edgar for that long. Um, every Sunday, I look forward to coming in, talking to him before church, and just getting to know a little bit more about him and asking him how his week was, and he'd always ask how ours was. I've learned more since. I've learned that he was two of nine children. Um, loved his family. 
There's his family. You know, he was married to Dorothy for 60 years. It's a great accomplishment. Uh, he had two daughters, two grandkids, and three great-grandkids. He lived a very full life. He loved his family. He loved going to the beach. He loved being in his garden. But he loved celebrating the birth of Jesus, and Christmas was his favorite season. We remember him for the short period we knew him. We miss him. He was a loving husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. We take peace in knowing that we will all be reunited once again in heaven. Another picture I want to show you of Edgar, because he served in the military as well. Look at that. Isn't that great? Um, so there he is as a veteran and now gone to be with the Lord. And I'll, I'm going to circle back to, to each of these folks in, in a few moments. The next person is Olive. And um, because of the length of her being here, we have a little bit more, I have a little bit more to show you because we have, we can. And I asked, uh, there were a few people, even though, even though Olive would constantly say, you know, that not enough people visit her, because I don't think there was ever would be a number where there would be enough for her. Uh, we had people that visited her regularly, and uh, Olive was sort of a, she was a roadblock when it came to getting in the sanctuary. Uh, she would sit where my wife and Sharon are sitting, that pew right there, and she would just cause this traffic jam <laughs> Because she would want to talk to everybody as they came into this sanctuary. Um, one of the persons or families that, that visited, uh, especially with all of the Moroccos, and so I'm going to ask Ken to come on up and share some words too. Good morning, everybody. So I, I, when George asked me to do this, and I started putting my thoughts down, about Olive, I started remembering things. And I understood what it means to go through this process of remembering and healing. And you know, it was much easier back in 2020 when she passed to just say, okay, you know, let me move on. And um, I, I did, I moved on emotionally. And then this all brought it back up again. So I think that I, I, I love this idea that we're doing this. I love that we get a chance to be able to go back and feel those emotions and maybe get, I don't know, closure. I, I don't really know if it's closure or not, but it's healthy. It's good for your soul mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So, so I wrote down some things. Um, I don't like reading from paper, but I didn't want to forget some things. Uh, so I realized that uh, many of you growing up in this church, knew Olive way better, or, or longer, I should say, than I did. You know, I, I came here in 1993, and when I came here in 93, I started then to get to know Olive and Noel. And, um, you know, I'm drawn to the elderly and the young, so much better or so much more than my own age. I don't really have a lot of patience for my generation. Um, <laughs> So you, you are approaching elderly, right? <laughs> Did you switch your mic on for that one? So, yeah, so my body's feeling that. You know, we just played racquetball, and George whacked me in the eye. I got a black and blue. So I am feeling a little elderly right now. But I was, draw I was very quickly drawn to them. Once Noel passed... So Olive was very lonely at that point, and I remember her asking me all the time, like, why did he leave me? You know, she, didn't, she was with him for so many years, and all of a sudden, she wasn't. And she, she missed him terribly. 
But that enabled me for some odd reason, I think God did that, uh, to get closer to her. She had a need, and I think God helped me to fulfill that need. You know, my family and I, Tracy and I, would, uh, would have Olive over for dinners at our house, for holidays. We invited her over for birthdays, so she celebrated those. Not her birthday, our birthdays. And um, she just became part of the family. We, um, we ended up taking her, I don't know if you guys know about the lighthouse down in Narragansett. It's, it's down there. Um, I mean, we go to Aunt Carrie's. I don't know if you guys go to the other place, but we go to Aunt Carrie's. And there's a lighthouse over there. And, she, and we'd go to pick her up, and we would take our dog, Daisy. She's a collie. And we would go down there. She would just sit on the bench, pet, pet Daisy, take in the sun. She just loved just relaxing and doing that. So it was, it was an amazing time that I, I ended up having to remember. <laughs> it was a tough time to, to forget. So when it, but when it became unsafe for Olive to drive, because she came here faithfully every Sunday, when it, when it became unsafe for her to drive, I started picking her up to bring her to church. And after church, I would bring her home. And, and when I brought her home, I would sit down. Yes, and the, and the conversations would be very long. Um, my wife, Tracy, um, had a lot of patience with me uh, not getting home that soon, that quickly, on a Sunday. But I loved that conversations. First, she would bring me around her house. This happened every Sunday, by the way. She'd bring me around her house and then there was this area in the back of the house, sort of like the greenhouse, and all her plants were in there because she had what a green thumb Olive had. She could bring a, a plant that was dead back to life without an issue. She would just... So, and, and, and we would go through that first, and then we'd sit down, and she'd tell me stories about her growing up. And I'll tell you, she grew up um, strict. Her parents were very strict, and, and um, I loved hearing those stories. The best stories that I would hear is how she saw dead spirits. And, and I, don't, I don't say that in jest to make fun of her, because I know she's listening, right? I wouldn't say that in jest. I'm saying that because I believed her. Like, the stories that she was telling me about these dead spirits, it's like, wow. It was, uh, I, think, I think one time Noel came to her, and, but again, she was desperate for his love that, you know, that she missed. But that was a good time. Now, my, my life changed drastically, um, and, and Tracy told you about it at Mother's Day sermon, so you understood by listening to that how, how my life changed. I couldn't pick her up anymore. Um, we, we were coming here. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, it's not about me, it's about Olive, so, but I couldn't pick her up anymore, and I couldn't take her home. I couldn't do that anymore. So Gary Wright started picking her up, thank God that he did that because she didn't want to miss a Sunday. And he would come pick her up, and then other people would take her home. Like Frank Dowding was one of the ones that really uh, did, a, did a really nice job taking her home. So she was able to still, but, but in that time, so Gary and Sherry um, got really close to Olive. And I'm sure that if Gary was here today, he could have cut up here and said a lot of things about her. I don't want to miss anything, so I'm just looking at my notes. Um, I just want to point out how much she loved this church by saying the front doors, if you go out here, um, uh, do, we, do we call it the Welcome Center now? I don't know what we call that. But outside these doors, there's two main doors. You, if you look at the plaque, you'll see that she donated those. And if you look at these doors that come into the sanctuary, there's like doves, stained glass windows. She did that too. She, she, wanted, she wanted to do that. She had some money left over uh, from Noel, and she wanted to dedicate that to the church. Lo loving, she had a loving heart and a loving spirit. It was unbelievable. So then, let's see. When I couldn't pick her up anymore, when she came rolling in, um, she'd sit, like you said, George, uh, on, the, on the pew back there. And I would immediately go back there and sit next to her because I missed her, because I couldn't pick her up anymore. I sat next to her, and every Sunday she'd put her, her head on my shoulders, and she put her hand on my leg, and she'd say, is that appropriate? You know, to put... <laughs> because remember what I said, she was brought up very strict, 
that was not a that was inappropriate for her to put her hand on my leg. And I would take her hand and put it back there. And I said, Olive, if you want to put your hand on my leg, put your hand on my leg. If that makes you feel good. And she says, Well, you know, because you're mine. Yeah, that killed me. You're mine. And I said, Olive, you're mine too. We 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 formed a relationship. And she said, a lot of times, actually, she said, do you think everybody in here would understand our relationship? Again, she may have seen it as inappropriate. And I said, Olive, yes. Who cares? I don't care if, if people don't understand our relationship. I didn't see anything inappropriate about it. So no, don't worry about it. Keep your hand there. Put your head on my shoulder. We'll, we'll get this through this together. But she, didn't, she never stopped asking me, why did Noel have to leave so early, so soon? She was so lonely. And, you know, I couldn't get there anymore to visit her all the time over her house. So then what happened was she couldn't take care of the house anymore. So then she had to go to assistant living. Oh, she hated that. You know, not only did she, did she stop driving, so she lost that independence, but now she lost her privacy. Now she didn't have her own home to take care of. Now she had to live with a bunch of other people. You know, Eleanor was there, right, for a while. So she got to see her, you know. I did, I did my best uh, to get there to visit her. Gary, I know, did his best to visit her. Some of you might have actually gone there and visited her too. Um, but like you said, it, no matter how many times we visited her, it wouldn't have been enough. You know, she just loved seeing us. Anyways, so as I said, Gary grew closer and closer to her. Um, so now when it became her birthdays, you know, the milestones, the four of us, uh, me and Gary, Sherry, Tracy, uh, took her out for her birthday dinner. And I think that, I'm getting to it, look, my, my daughter's going like, what about me? Wasn't I there? Yes. <laughs> When, but not on her first one. When she got to be 100, 101, 102, you know, we take her out each time. And yes, my daughter came along. I believe my son might have been there too. I don't know. Um, but the, that's not the point. The point is that she didn't spend her birthday alone. We got to take her out and, and celebrate that. So let me end by saying this. So Olive lived the rest of her days knowing she knew that people loved her dearly. You were her family. She saw you guys more than she saw her blood relatives. So you guys were her family. And that's why she needed to get here every Sunday. And towards the end of her life, she couldn't get here anymore. The, the place that she lives wouldn't let her leave, leave there. It was a, there was a safety, healthy, health kind of issue. She couldn't come here anymore, and that killed her. But <laughs> please take comfort in knowing that she felt the love. And I know, I know, that even though she questioned at times where she would be when she died, and I couldn't believe it after all those years, she still questioned. She still said, I hope I'm going to be in heaven when I die. We all know, Olive, those of us that know her, and we know we'll see her again. And I know for sure that she'd be hanging out with Noel. I know that for sure. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so a few years back, our church celebrated 125 years. This church was established in 1891. Olive wasn't around that, uh, but close. Uh, one big incident that happened is that our church burned down in 1925. The building you're in is not the original church building that we're in right now. Um, this was built in the 20s, however, this piece of it. Uh, and Olive remembers that happening. Right? And so uh, Kristen Parker actually and I, for that 125th, went to Olive's apartment and interviewed her. And we videotaped that. And I just want to show you an excerpt of that video. 
so the other voice you hear is Kristen's, uh, and she's telling two stories. One, about when this church burned down as a little girl, and two, how she started coming to this church, actually. All right? And I remember they told us the church was on fire. We almost, we took the little ones by the hand. I, Holly, Betty, Bob, three of us were ready to go, able to go, hurried there. I remember standing where Benjamin House is and being afraid, wanting to cry. I'd never seen a fire like that before. How old do you think you were? Pardon? How old were you? Do you I think, think uh, I was young. I would be uh, eight or nine. Mm. Uh, terribly impressed by it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the little ones you just held the hand. Do you know what eye. started the fire? Uh, this uh, the uh, it was winter time, and there, there had to be a furnace going. There was good, the uh, church services were over on that day. We'd all been to Sunday school mm -hmm. and church. So it was a Sunday night. It was a Sunday day. And we, the fire had to be banked. The uh, janitor, and he was called a janitor in those days, mm -hmm. was a Mr. Ingram. We all liked him very much. And he lived very nearby, just down the street across from Bob's store, mm -hmm. uh, and so he could get there quickly. He banked the fire, and uh, I don't know quite how they did it, mm -hmm. but uh, that was uh, how they said it then, but for those days. It overheated. Mm -hmm. That furnace got blazing hot, and it was a wooden church. Yeah. And as the fire burst forth, mm -hmm. it would be easily. Somebody saw smoke, but the, and the we had to have volunteer firemen, but uh, there weren't even hoses, no running water, right. no anything. So that everybody grabbed anything they had because it wasn't going to do any good. They couldn't, I don't believe they had hoses to get to the sand pond. I don't think, they no way to do anything. Mm -hmm. But they tried. Somebody rushed in and got the big Bible from mm -hmm. Liverpool. But, uh, it already had been in the area. That was a brave thing to do. It smelled so it never could be used again. It was that awful fire. I can almost not know. Mm. Foolish, but that is the way it is uh, in things of that sort. Everybody just stood on a big crowd. The men were rushing all around, just keeping people back. Mm. Burned to do a crisp. Mm. It's uh, sad, sad, I'm sad. Like so they built that first church. It was a good big one. You've seen pictures of it. I remember sitting there with my grandparents. I begged to go to church. Uh, I wanted to go with my grandma and grandpa to church. Grandma said I could go if when I could sing holy, holy, holy <laughs> all by myself knowing all the words. So I practiced, but only the first verse. I finally got that first down and I was small. And I walked, we, everybody walked and goes to church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember sitting in the pews. They you, you each had your own pew to sit in those days. And we, Grandpa, Ollie, and Grandma. And I could sit, I was already trained to sit. And I could sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. We still do. I'm pretty good at that one. And there was, there was one other thing that I wanted to make sure was a part of this, because one of the things that connected all of, and my wife and I, is she was a Trekkie. If you don't know what that is, it means she loved Star Trek. And my wife came across this picture. <laughs> That's Olive, uh, Hector, and Ken as Spock there doing a skit from Star Trek for something. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, but she got to dress up, and my wife actually, she loved Next Generation like we did. Uh, and when they came out with the movies, my wife and I actually took her to the movies to see what they were doing beyond the television show. So to my fellow Trekkie, Olive, uh, amen, amen. What I want to do, uh, so this service is going to be a, just a tad longer. Just These are just three people. 
and there are more, right? Uh, there are those that we struggled, we lost during COVID. Um, I remember like even for, for um, Mark's mom, uh, Joan, we were able to do a service, but it was limited, right? And there are others that people have lost during COVID and then since then. What I'm fully aware of is as what I wanna do is just take a moment of quietness. And I know that there are those of you grieving um, it could be recent, it, doesn't, it could be years, it doesn't matter, because grief is grief. And don't ever let anybody tell you, or use the phrase with grief, that you get over it. You do not, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to get through it. If, I can't imagine getting over it, because then it means, some, I think that means something about I mean, loving that person means that we don't get over it. It becomes a part of who we are. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, I would just like to take a moment of just some silent prayer. Lift up people you know are grieving. And if you're grieving, I will just end that with a prayer for you as well. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning for all of those who have experienced grief and they're going through it even in this moment. Um, time is irrelevant when it comes to grief. So Lord, it, it doesn't matter if it was recent or not recent. I just want to lift up those with grieving hearts and just claim your promise, Jesus, that you preached on that mountain when you said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, I simply pray for your comfort for each and every person grieving today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, there's a scripture I want to read, and just allow me a couple of minutes to tie this all together. Okay? It's from Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to give you... A, the, 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 the first verse of chapter 12 begins with this word, therefore. Now that ought to tell us something. Which is, you know, so you all know, when you open up your Bible, it's really convenient for us to find passages because there's chapters and verses, but they weren't written that way. It was one long flowing letter. And, and, uh, and so when you see the word therefore, you better know what just happened. Because of this, therefore, this, right? That's, and that's what the author of Hebrews is doing at chapter 12. The therefore is based on chapters 10 and 11, especially 11, which we call the Hall of Faith. And so Paul, uh, Paul the author of Hebrews uh, in 11, starts listing all these people who were reconciled to God through faith. And he's talking about Abraham and, and Moses, and he has this whole list of people, right? And then he says, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all the ones he's just mentioned, right? Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay? We're in a race. And uh, the writer of Hebrews says, we're going to run that. We've got to try to have life with no distractions so that we get off, don't get off track and keep our eyes clearly focused on Jesus. So we start well. You start well by just accepting what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross. That begins the race. 
And then we run well. Let us run with endurance, right? The race that lies before us. So we run with endurance. Don't give up. Right? Don't ever give up in the race that, we, that, that, that we're talking about, the Bible's talking about here. Secondly, run with a team. Right? Run with a team. This large crowd of witnesses surrounding us, this idea in Hebrews 11 doesn't culminate at that chapter, like I said. Um, it continues on and says, therefore, and, and think about these people. There's a team of people around us and in our faith history, right? And, and these, the, the, the people re reading this, the people that it was written to are under persecution. They had given up houses. Many had their property confiscated. They had actually suffered physical persecution, some death. And he's just saying, believers, hang on and do it together. Right? Um, encourage one another by your lives and by your faith. Encourage one another. And then run with your eyes focused on Jesus. That's our focus, right? We keep our eyes on Jesus, the source and the perfecter of our faith. And he understood. He went to the cross and endured that for us so that we do not lose heart. And then we end well. And that's what we've been talking about here, right? One of the basic teachings of Christianity is so simple. It's not where you start that matters. It's where you end. Right? In the, in the race in between. It's how we finish. Right? The finish line of the race is being like Jesus. Right? His growing in us, his maturing in us, this race course that looks like Jesus Christ. And of course, the ultimate finish line is where the people that we have just been talking about have achieved. That's where they are. Right? Eternity in heaven. And every one of them, as you heard these stories, and there's so much more, so keep telling stories, uh, every story leaves a legacy. That's, and that's really what my point of wrapping this up this morning is. Um, not everybody in the Bible made it in that hall of faith, by the way, right? We could say that, you know, that there are those listed, and then we go, and there are those that aren't. Not that they could list everybody anyway, right? But the first king of Israel, Saul, should be there. But he's not. Because he was focused more on pleasing people than pleasing God. Interesting, the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon, should be there. He's not in there. Because there was that whole big time in his life that he focused more on foreign women and their gods. Balaam, good prophet. But he had his eyes on money. His eyes were so out of focus and distracted he could not see literally an angel in front of his face. His donkey was more focused on God than he was. How's that, right? They're not in that list. So I want to say in this running the race, these people have run the race. Well done, good and faithful servants. But we need to end well with the legacy. A legacy. Can I tell you? I was thinking about all of this. I thought of each of these three, and I think of Edith and Donna. You, you referred to it. That through all the tougher times, she had a harder time hearing, a harder time seeing. Her spirit tended to always be at peace. And I went, I want that. That's her legacy. I want that. I want to live well. I want to end well like that. You know? Edgar, and I just, you know, uh, there was a gentleness and a love about Edgar. I, I, some of you will get this. He reminded me a little of Noel. He could tell a story, and then, but he would begin to tear up. And I said, I know that guy. There's others like him, you know? Uh, and Edgar was that, that person I could look to and go, you know, he felt things deeply. I like that. I wish I felt, oh, it's, hard, it's harder to feel things more deeply, you know? And there are times when I wish I felt them more, you know? That's Edgar, a legacy. 
and acceptance and love. And the thing about Olive hit me very early on. Olive and Noel, her husband Noel, were on the pulpit committee that, I, that interviewed me. But the thing I learned about Olive very clearly that kind of blew me away, and I, I was in my 30s when I met Olive. Um, that would probably put her in her 70s already. You know? <laughs> and I would have these conversations, and what I realized about Olive is, as a, she was a teacher, she tutored my son, by the way, at one point, my oldest son. She never stopped learning. She was listening to somebody and reading to somebody. This is very early on, all about end times. And I'm going, you know, in, in an example where a lot of people gave up discipleship once they graduated from high school, that was not Olive. She was a constant, constant learner. She was in Sunday school right up until the Sunday she could not physically be here. In her 90s, okay? That's a legacy. That's the very, one of the first things that impressed me about Olive, and it continued in her life. She continued to learn and be in discipleship. She was a, an inspiration that the race wasn't over till it was over. Okay. Accept the gift of Jesus. Run the race with endurance. And what's the legacy you're leaving? Are we leaving a legacy like these folks? Lord, I want to thank you for the testimonies of people in our church. People are part of our family, more importantly, a part of your family. Lord, it is good to remember today, and it's good to remember many others as well. Help us, Lord, not only see them for the good things that they taught us, but help us, Lord, to see them as the examples of how to be an example to others, to leave behind something, even like all of these people that, that we read in Scripture, left behind that example for us to follow. Lord, you know what? I pray that we are a part of that hall of faith as well. All in Jesus' name. Amen. The good thing to know as we celebrate people, right now, and it was, give, it was said, we know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is well with their soul. I can remember quite a few years ago, after I'd, after I'd met Olive for a few years, we were talking about whistling noises in the church. And she told me that when she was a young girl, she coached soccer. Did you guys know that? I, so I said to her, Olive, soccer wasn't even invented in those days. <laughs> And she laughed, so that was good. She had a good sense of humor. Anyway, please stand and we'll sing It Is Well With My Soul.
as we go, when we go, think about leaving a legacy today. Amen.